أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى Welcome to this course on discerning between the 10 recitations, the 10 قراءات Based on the book, Rishad al-Qalaba, in the Tamiyiz, between the Qiraat al In this video, we're going to be looking at the first chapter, which is an overview of the 10 Qiraat. Before we are able to discern between them, we need to know who are the 10 Qura and who are the Ruwat that relate from them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, A'udhu billahi min ash-shantun jirmujim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَّنَ بِهِ الرُّوحَ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ That indeed, this is a revelation from the Lord of the universe, from the Lord of all the worlds. He has sent it down with the noble spirit, with the holy spirit, which is Jibreel alayhi salam. This is in a different qira'a, in the normal qira'a we did, نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ that the Holy Spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, came down with it. But in another qira'ah, Allah Ta'ala sent it down with Jibreel alayhi salam. Ala qalbika, upon your heart, the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so that you might be of the warners. So Jibreel alayhi salam recited the revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam also recited in turn to Jibreel alayhi salam. And this method of acquiring and learning the Qur'an is known as Talaqi. وَإِنَّكَ لَتُلَقَّ الْقُرْآنَ مِنْ لَدُنْ حَكِيمٍ عَلِيمٍ And the Prophet ﷺ taught to the Sahaba in the same way. He recited to them and they also recited to him. And there are a hadith that uh, clarify both these methods of teaching. The Sahaba رضي الله عنه in turn taught it to the Tabi'un. They in turn taught it to the Tabi'un. We pass it on to the next generation. So there's a continuous chain of narration for the Quran up until our very time. Person that's acquired the Sanad in the Quran, he can tell you who is, we should be able to tell you who his teacher is, who his teacher is, who his teacher is, and so on. Going all the way back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then to Jibreel Alayhi Wasallam and then to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So in the generation of the Tabi'un and those after them. So the Tabi'un and the Taba'at Tabi'un. There were certain individuals who became famous for teaching the recitation of the Qur'an according to a particular manner. The Qur'an was revealed in different ways and it was taught by the Prophet ﷺ to the Sahaba in different ways and they taught their students as well in different manners. And that's why we have different Qira'at. So each of these individuals, they became known as a Qari and the Qira'at that we have are named after them. These individuals have basically made a choice out of all the different applications that we have, like Sila, Imala, Mad, and so on. They made a choice of how to decide, and then they taught people to decide in this way. That's why the Tira'a is attributed to these people. But they received it from the Sahaba, who in turn received it from the Prophet. So it's not that they made up any of the dissertations. And these individuals are spread across five different regions of the Muslim world which is Medina, Mecca, Basra, Sham, and Kufa. And in Qira'at, we do it in this way. We start with the Qur'an from Medina, then Mecca, then Basra, then Sham, and then Kufa. There are initially seven Qira'at that are studied, and then another three gives us a total of ten. So in the period of the Sahaba and the Tabi'un and so on, there were many other Qira'at besides just ten. There were many others. And... Books documented on Qira'at in the earlier stages mentioned much more than just 10 Qira'at. However, those that have been authentically transmitted to us up until our very time is only the 10. The 7 is normally studied first, and that is via the Shaltubiya of Imam al The correct term or full name of that poem is Hirzul Amani wa Wajhul Tahani. This is a poem on Qira'at. It's over a thousand lines, and it discusses just the 7 Qira'at. Then to complete the ten, we do the three qira'at via the durra. al durra al muliya of Imam Ibn al-Jazari. The students that are watching this hopefully should be familiar with the Muqaddimat al jazariya of Imam Ibn al-Jazari. So this is a poem that is written on qira'at, the durra. So the focus of this lesson is now on the names of the qurra. So if it's the first time encountering this, encountering this it might be quite a bit of information. 
So you might have to watch it or read through it a couple of times before you become familiar with him. But from Medina, we had Nafi'ah. Then from Mecca, we have Ibn Kathir. From Basra, we have Abu Amr. From Sham, we have Ibn Amir. Then from Kufa, we have three. We have Asim, Hamza, and Kisai. Again, in that sequence. So those are the seven Qurra from the Sabah. One each from Medina, from Makkah, from Basra, from Sham, and then three from Kufa. In the Durra, we have another Qari from Medina, Abu Jafar. And then from Basra, we also have Yaqub. And from Kufa, we have Khalaf. Abu Jafar over here is actually the student of Nafi'. Sorry, he's actually the teacher of Nafi'. But in the sequence, we first study the Qira'ah of Nafi'. And then afterwards, we study the Qira'ah of Abu Jafar. This name Khalaf is going to appear again later on in the lesson. Each of these 10 Qura, they had two outstanding students, okay, who passed on the manner of the recitation. Each one became known as a Rawi, and the different Riwayat we have are named after them. So in this chain of narration over here, on top in blue, you have the Qura, and then below, you have the Ruat. Okay, so here on top, we have the Qurra, and then here below, we have the Ruat. Again, it's a simplification that there were more than just two Ruat for each of the Qurra, but these two were selected by the latest scholars. So for Nafi, we have Qalun, and we have Warsh. If the names sound a bit strange, then this is because they're actually nicknames. So the names were Isa and Warsh. His name was Uthman, but we know them by the nicknames Qalun and Warsh. Then for Ibn Kathir, Abdullah ibn Kathir, who's from Mecca, we have Bazi and Qumbul. It's Ahmed, is his name, Bazi, and Qumbul, his name is Muhammad. Then Abu Amr is known by his kunya, not by his name, Abu Amr. We have Turi and we have Susi. Turi's actual name is Hafs. Same like the Hafs that we recite for by the Shaltabiya, but a different individual. And then Salih is the name of Susi. Then we have Ibn Amir, who has, as his narrators, Hisham and Ibn Dakwan. Then the Kufan Qurra, we first have Asim, and he has two students, Shu'ba and Hafs. So this one over here, Hafs. This is the way that the majority of the world recites in. But in the sequence of the Qur'an, it is the second of the two narrators of Hasim. Shu'ba comes first. Then you have Hamza, who has Khalaf and Khalad. Then lastly, for the Sabah, we have Kisai. His name is Ali. And his students were Abul Hadith and Duri Kisai. Then via the Durra. We have Abu Jafar, we have Ibn Wardan, whose name was Isa. We have Ibn Jamaz, whose name was Suleiman. We Yaqub, we have Ruwais, his name is Muhammad. And then we have Rauh. And then we have Khalaf. And the students are Ishaq and Idris. So here on top we had Hamza. And his Rawi was Khalaf. So this name, Khalaf. It is the same individual. He's the Rawi of Hamza. He's also a Qari in his own right. He has his own independent Qira'a. And he has his own students that transmit from him, Ishaq and Idris. A Rawi relates from his Qari either as his direct student or via a chain of narration with one or more intermediaries. So to go back over here, Qalu and Warsh, they learn directly from Nafi'. Okay, but in the case of Ibn Kathir and Bazi and Qumbul, there was multiple links in between. For Abu Amr, between Duri and Susi, there's one link, Yahya al-Yazidi. For Ibn Amir, again, there's a chain of narration between himself and his narrators, Hisham and Ibn Dakwa. For Asim, he taught Shu'ba and Hafs directly. For Hamza, his individual called Sulaim comes in between Khalaf and Khalad. And then for Kisai, he taught directly Abu Harith and Duri. 
you don't really have to worry about all of this extra information that I'm giving that's not in a text just for your benefit. But um, what you need to focus on is the names, right? Who are the names of the Qurra and what are the names of the Ruwaat that narrate from them? So Alhamdulillah, what our scholars have done is they've written poems on all the different sciences. So Imam Shatibi, as I mentioned, he wrote Hiruzul Amani on the Qiraat. And in that is a section where he lists all of these names of these Qur'an that we've now discussed. But because many of us, we don't know Arabic, or it's not our first language, then these poems can be a bit tricky to uh, study and to understand and to memorize and so on. So I've actually written an English poem to hopefully achieve the same purpose. The benefit of the poem, there is a meter, there is a rhyme, you can sing it, which makes it easy to memorize. So all these names that we've now discussed and went through, they are actually uh, in the poem that we have below. You can either scan a QR code or you can click on the link to listen to the poem. In this video, I'm not going to go through the entire poem. As I said, you can watch it in the recording or just read through it on your own, inshallah. So for each lesson that we have, there is an exercise at the end. And in this exercise, we need to fill in the blanks in the diagram below. And so I had this diagram and went through all of them, mentioned all the names of the Qurra, the names of all of the Ruwat. So again, if it's the first time you're doing it, you might need to pause the video at this point and maybe take as much time as you need to try and learn and memorize it. If you have some background in Qur'an, then maybe you can immediately go on into completing the exercise. So you can pause the video and complete the exercise. And then once you've done, you can resume and then listen to the answers that you should have had. So for Nafi', the first one over here is supposed to be Qalun, and the second one over here is Warsh. Yeah, I've given you the names of the Ruwat and narrators, Bazi and Qumbul. So the Qari that they are linked to is Ibn Kathir. Then for Abu Amr, it's two Rawis are Duri first, and second is Susi. Over here, for Isham and Ibn Dakwan, the Qari that they relate from is Ibn Amir. Then for Shu'ba and Hafs, the Qari that they relate from, the name you have to fill in there is Asim. For Hamza, his two students are Khalaf and then Khalad. And then for Abu Al-Hadith and Duri Kisai, yeah, that's a giveaway. That's an indication that is relating from Kisai. Why do we specify Duri Kisai? Because Duri over here is the same individual. So when you just say Duri, or we can specify by saying Duri Basri, then it is Duri relating from Abu Amr. We specify by saying Kisai or Ali. Name of Kisai was Ali, so we say Duri Ali or Duri Kisai when he narrates from Kisai. Because the manner of recitation is different in those two riwayats. Then for the three Qiraat via the Durra, we have the names here given Ibn Waddan, Ibn Jamaz. The Qadi that they relate from is Abu Ja'far. Then for Ya'qub, we have Uwais. And we have Rauh. And lastly, Idris and Ishaq should be Ishaq first and then Idris. Um, we have Khalaf. We have Khalaf and Ashir. Okay, so besides the poem itself, there's also a commentary on the poem. So you can either read or watch the commentary by clicking on the links below or scanning the QR codes below. And if you want to go even further, you can read the book of Qari Salim Gaibi. It gives you some biographical information regarding the Qurwa. So this is the entire chapter one that we've covered in this lesson. It goes through the names of the 10 Qurwa. In the next video, we'll start going through the different applications. So, Allah, Allah, Muhammad, wa alhamdulillah, wa alhamdulillah, wa alhamdulillah.